The following is a rebroadcast of the 1992 Tri-State Tournament of Champions. Be sure to join Doug Brown and Dan Murphy on Sunday, October 11th, for a brand new season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Mike Morgan arrived in this year's Tournament of Champions with a 4.55 to beat Glenn LeBlanc. Two weeks ago, he beat brother Tom Morgan with a 4.02. In those matches, Mike got out to a comfortable lead and wasn't really threatened in the third game. Last week, he got out to a big lead again, thanks to a late explosion in game one. That looks good, too. Oh! With a 41-pin lead after two games, it looked like a lock. But Dave Richards put some marks together at the tail end of the match and needed this mark in the 10th to have a chance to win it. Oh, and that's it. That is it. And you see the reaction. And over on the bench, Mike Morgan just leaned back and threw a towel in the air. Last year, Pat Pay started as the number four seed and won four straight matches to take the Tournament of Champions title. Can Mike Morgan do the same? Stay tuned for the finals of the 1992 Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Yeah! Yeah! Come on! Oh! oh, oh 20 yeah. more! Oh! From Park Place Lanes and Wyndham, featuring outstanding candlepin bowlers from all over New England. We're gonna hear some noise if this is a strike. Got a shot at it! Yes! Oh! Oh! Wow! Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your host, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to a packed, and I mean packed, Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Welcome to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. Welcome to Candlepin Stars and Strikes, our final show of the season. That is, final show at noon. We'll have another show coming up at 1 o'clock, the uh, doubles tournament of champions. But this is the final of the... Uh, Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, Dan, and uh, we're down to two bowlers. we got one guy who's been waiting and another guy who's been very, very hot. You know, they couldn't think of two better uh, bowlers to be in the finals. Uh, Mike Morgan and Paul Berger, two quality Canopin bowlers, and I expect uh, they'll be here with their best bowling, too. All right, let's meet both bowlers. Uh, if you've been with us the last several weeks, you already know this first guy very well. He has won three matches in a row. He has had 400 or better three consecutive weeks. From Lynn, Massachusetts, our number four seed, Mike Morgan. Um, I'm almost embarrassed to mention his average at 125. He's averaging about 140 on the show, 188 for a high single, 474 for a high triple. And he has knocked off, in order, Glenn LeBlanc, his brother Tom Morgan, and then last, last week Dave Richards. And today he will try and make it four in a row as he will try and take the title away from a previous Tournament of Champions winner. Guy who won the title two years ago, he's been sitting in that number one spot waiting for this chance from Hopedale, Mass., our number one seed, Paul Berger. And he's been in every one of the uh, Tournament of Champions uh, tournament, and he averages 127, 193, and his high triple at uh, 500. And I'm sure if you haven't heard about that, we'll talk more about it later on in the show. Indeed we will, and we will also talk more about the prize money in this one. Lots of cash on the line, $600 to the runner-up. $1,500 to the winner. We'll have the bonus ball contest, as always, at the end of the show. We had a winner last week, but uh, we've kept all the postcards in the TV, so everybody will get a second chance this week. And we're going to start this championship match. Three strings, Mike Morgan and Paul Berger, right after these messages. Don't go anywhere. Well, if you've missed any of the first four weeks of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, it's been uh, relatively simple, pretty much. Uh, Glenn LeBlanc threw a big 400 triple the first week to knock off Stu Bergman. And the last three weeks, Mike Morgan has thrown 400 triples or better to uh, knock off first Glenn LeBlanc, then Tom Morgan, and then Dave Richards. And now Mike Morgan will try and make it four wins in a row. But in order to do that, he's going to have to beat our number one seed, Paul Berger. Right, 
Mike starts four horsemen left with the 10 pin. <laughs> ben oh, starts yes. with the mark. Listen to this crowd. Wow. <laughs> the crowd is into it already. Well, already this is uh, unprecedented. The first four weeks of the Tournament of Champions have each featured a 400 triple. And I, well, I won't say anything because my track record lately has been to uh, jinx people, so I won't say anything from there, but you know what I was going to say. I know, and everybody at home was saying, please, Doc, don't <laughs> say it. <laughs> One, two, four for spear oh. number two. In a row. Good way to get the uh, cobwebs out and the butterflies and everything else. Open with a couple marks. And here's our number one seed, Paul Berger, who qualified for the Tournament of Champions back on December 22nd when he knocked off Tim Lipke with a 437. Tim Lipke threw a 404 against him. And there's a spare in the first for Paul Berger. A very delicately accomplished spare off the head pin. Just touches the head pin. The wood does a lot of the damage on the two pin in the, in the seven. And seven pin drop. You heard Dan mention it earlier. Paul Berger now has appeared in all four of the Tournament of Champions events. This is the fourth annual. In 1989, he was the number six seed and lost his first match to, guess who? Mike Morgan. That's the only other time these two guys have met here on Stars and Strikes. Back in the 1989 Tournament of Champions, the first week, Mike Morgan won it 412 to 399. That's right. Paul did mention that uh, I was talking before the show. He mentioned that he had a good score of 399 and lost to Mike uh, Morgan. Through Mike the middle. filling his second mark with a five. So that was 89. Lost his first uh, Tournament of Champions match. Then in 1990, Paul came back as the number one seed and won the tournament with a win over Al Cloutier with a 391. Then last year, Paul was the number three seed and was one of several victims of Pat Pay, who won last year's event. Like off the head pin that time. Ball's breaking a little sharper left to right than it normally does for Mike an indication he's just letting up on the speed a little bit. We've talked about this quite a bit the last three weeks when Mike's been here, but his overall record now here on Stars and Strikes is 13 and two. It's 12 and two in singles competition, and of those 14 singles matches, he has thrown 400 or better 11 times. It's an amazing record. The man you're looking at right here has an amazing record too. I mentioned at the start of the show of the 500 triple. Now, if you're a Candlepin Bowling fan and you live in New England and you haven't heard about this, <laughs> where have you been? <laughs> uh, Paul had strings of 159, 148, and 193 on the Channel 5 show out of Boston. That was just a couple of weeks ago, and I'll tell you, as everybody knows, we uh, tape our programs in advance, and it just so happened that we had a taping session the day after Paul threw that 500, and I'll tell you, that was just the talk of the day, all day long. The first 500 ever rolled on television, Candlepins. Amazing. <laughs> it's, it's really funny how people are. I was standing there talking to Paul, and I don't know who the, see that spare replay first. I don't know who the gentleman was standing with us, but he was talking about the spares that he missed. <laughs> and I says, well, how many open frames did he have? <laughs> what have you done for me lately? That's right. Uh, amazing score. 
And he's at 500 for three games. What's your high triple? Uh, four, hmm, 476. I think for a minute. Been a while since you've been up there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That wasn't close to 500. I mean, 24 pins sounds like it was close, but I know the last few f frames, I was like a double strike, spare strike or something. I got mm -hmm. a lot of them in the last few boxes, so. Uh, to throw 500, that's, wow. I, I was talking to one of the bowlers. I don't remember which one it was uh, recently about the fact also that it's it's pretty much a generally accepted uh, rule of thumb among the bowlers that, of course, a lot of these guys bowl on the pro tour and they bowl in a lot of events that require 10 strings. Uh, many of them are five, but a lot of them are 10. And uh, the high triple only applies to the first three strings that you roll. At least some several bowlers have told me that that's the way you do it. It's not like if you're rolling a 10-string event, you don't count the fifth, sixth, and seventh strings as your high triple if you happen to get a high score. That rule just changed uh, several years ago. Is that right? Yeah. Oh! oh! It was only for a 10 box, but that was a marvelous shot right there. Nothing is sacred down there. Go, six seven. Six yep. into the seven. Didn't want to touch the wood. He hopped it right over the wood. Well, a four pin lead here early on for Paul Berger, and he'll have to show us a shot here to make this one. Ooh. He almost did. Well, Paul is on an incredible run here on uh, Stars and Strikes. We mentioned that he lost. Uh, in the Tournament of Champions last year, but that's the only time he's lost here in the last two and a half years. And uh, of the last five times he's been here, now six times, including today, five times he's been the number one seed. In uh, all of the previous occasions he's been the number one seed, he has won. And he came in as the number one seed today. Mike Morgan. This place got awfully quiet. <laughs> Don't forget, stay tuned. Right after our final here on Stars and Strikes, we will take a quick break and then slide right into our Stars and Strikes doubles Tournament of Champions final as the number one seeded team of Gary Carrington and Jack Ray will step into the picture. Well, early on in this match, the bowlers don't seem to be carrying the extra pin or two they need to give themselves a real good shot of the spare. And then, of course, after today, after 2 o'clock today, that'll be it for the season here on Stars and Strikes. We'll take a break for the summer, but the bowling doesn't stop. We will be presenting uh, some of the best shows of the season just completed during the summer months. And then, of course, in the fall, it all starts again. So you want to find out exactly when we'll be starting our new season. It'll be late September, early October, sometime in there. Paul Berger close to converting the half Worcester for a spare. He leads by seven. Paul is from Hopedale, Mass. Off target again to the right. Paul works as the purchasing manager at Sun Microsystems, does a lot of his bowling at Lynn Sudbury, and Fico's in Franklin, Mass. He and his wife, Paula, have two sons, Damon and Alex, who are both here. Enjoying the action. Paul's shaking his head. He's going to wait for that wood to be checked. It looks like it should be OK, and it is, according to lob line judge Joe Paglia. And Paul takes care of it with a 10. 
Lead is now eight, 91, 83 through eight frames. Both bowls in a little bit of a drought. Mike opened up with a pair of spares and then he's been shut out since and Paul Burgers had spares in the There's an extra pin. And a nine drop. And a choice to be made. Well, now he's open the last six frames. Would he go right at it or at no, the wood? I'd, I'd play the wood. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> he had room to get by it, but. Well, you're shooting at a f something that's uh, about a foot in, in length as mm -hmm. opposed to trying to get through an opening that's a few inches, so. A little full, seven, seven fill. Wife Kathleen, son Michael, and uh, Mike works at GE. And he finishes that first game 109, right. And there's a nine pin drop. At first it was looked like Paul was gonna be left with a seven, nine, 10. Piece of wood took out both the nine and the 10 at once and leaves him just with a seven. Looking for his third mark of the match. Gets it. Each bowler with three now. $600 to the runner up. Oh my, the one five. That's twice we've seen that in the last few weeks. Very rare. Dead even right now. And Paul will take three extras for a 112 and a three pin lead after game one. Two to go for the big money here on the 1992 Tri State Mega Bucks Tournament of Champions final. And we'll be back in a minute. Game two, the finals of the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions. Thanks to folks at Tri-State Megabucks, we've said it many times, but always bears repeating. They have done such a great job supporting not only Stars and Strikes, but Candlepin Bowling in general. They're with us all year long, and this finale of the season here on Stars and Strikes. Spare in the first for Paul. Leading by just three pins, 112 to 109. But by no means are the people at Tri-State Megabucks alone in helping us bring you all the great bowling here on the wins. We want specifically also to thank in this series the folks at Somerville Lumber, where you can get it right the first time, Somerville Lumber. And Emmett Horgan and all the folks at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan where they encourage you to come to Salem and save. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Of course, we have uh, many thank yous that we always like to uh, acknowledge at the end of the year. We're gonna do that at the end of the next hour, at the end of the uh, doubles hour. But uh, certainly, as always, wanna take uh, every opportunity to thank all of you who tune in week in and week out and help make Stars and Strikes such a popular program, and we do appreciate it. And uh, also, thanks to you, Dan Murphy. A pleasure as always. Thank you, Doug. And the feeling is likewise. We have a lot of fun. We even get paid a little for doing this. <laughs> we wouldn't tell him we'd do it for nothing, would we? I haven't told him that of you. No. no. <laughs> Just kidding, <laughs> folks. Just kidding. Oh, yes. Oh, what a spare. Oh, yeah. The 2 6. The crowd is kind of falling asleep there. That woke them up. <laughs> Sounds like Fenway in here again now. After that shot. Right now, 
now Mike Morgan's put on a clinic how to make spares. The three, four, six, seven that time. Sometimes that's all it takes to wake both bowlers up. It's an eight. No. Ball will convert that for a spare. Not an easy one, the 2-8. Now five marks for each bowler, all spares so far. There's a nine drop on the spare. I dare say we'll have a strike or two before this hour is over. Ooh. And it's still there for a nine. 53 through four. This is on a mark for Mike Morgan, and uh, well, I thought that was gonna be the first strike of the day. When you start making spares like the first two in this game, Mike Morgan, it's got to start loosening you up. And the pins will start falling for you. The crowd will get behind you. Three in a row to start this second game for Mike Morgan. He had a rather quiet 109 opening game. I remember coming into today, over the last three weeks, he was averaging 140 per string. And he'll have a shot at another seven drop. Now that was a little full also, but he was able to trip the seven pin out of there, give himself a shot at the three, six, and 10 to make it four marks in a row. No problem, and a quick timeout as Mike Morgan makes it four in a row. He has taken the lead here early in game two. Back at Park Place Lanes, Paul Berger. Well, maybe we won't get that first strike, Doug. We've had a lot of close ones. <laughs> I can't believe they won't get a few of these two balls. <laughs> well, looks like lane 32 has been pretty good to Paul this game. The first, the third, and the fifth boxes, all marks, all spares. All in lane 32. Well, he missed the head pin to the right, but yet it didn't turn out that badly. Spare leap. And, ooh! Hoo, hoo. Well, I'm you, afraid I almost had that one about racked I was, up. I was just going to say, you are about to say <laughs> and a spare, but it's a 10. 81 through six, Mike Morgan working on a string of four spears, as you can see on the screen. We'll fill the fourth spear right now. Among the highlights of Mike's run here on Stars and Strikes during the Tournament of Champions, uh, three weeks ago he threw a 173 middle game that had eight marks in a row. Last week he threw a 166 opening game that featured a triple strike in the 10th. And he's got a chance for his fifth mark in a row here. Well, he threw his arms up there. He knew he missed the head pin. He didn't want to punch two and a half Worcester, but he dropped seven. And he's going to make it. Oh. One mistake. Missed the head pin on that, on that fill, but got a break. And he came right back with the ball, back in the 1-3 pocket for the conversion of the spare. So when you get big games, you throw a couple balls that aren't quite where you want to put them, get a break out of it. That's what happened in that frame. Mike has the lead by five, plus this fill. And will he carry another one this time? No. No, but the wood swung around, so he's got a real shot at making this. The two pin, a couple pieces of wood that should sweep across. Probably like to grab both pieces if he can. He does. He does. So the 10 pin go? No. Nope. Not this time. So the storm is over, at least for a while. Nine box. So, the lead is 11. 
for Mike Morgan overall. He trailed by three coming into this game. Paul Berger with the short three-step approach. And he's going to shoot at the 3 6 10. Oh, oh, that's two boxes in a row now. I thought he had it covered. He had the one, two last box on lane 31 and punched out the head pin. This time the three, six, 10 and takes out the three and the six and it looked like the 10 was destined to go, but not so. 91 through seven. Well, he turned away from that one. He didn't even want to look at it. I think maybe he thought he would have a half Worcester. Wound up taking out four. Nine box for Paul. Two open frames for Mike Morgan to work on, leading this game by 14, overall by 11. possibly the spread eagle or something similar to that. Everything came forward on the left-hand side of the rack and leaves himself just the 3 6 10 again. No. Mm -mm. Can't cash in on that break. A lot of times we talk about how difficult it is to win consecutive uh, programs here on Stars and Strikes and mentioned the lowest seed of the year to advance to the Tournament of Champions was Dave Richards, who was the number three seed. But yet it seems to happen in the Tournament of Champions. And of course, you might be able to attribute that to the, uh, the quality of the field that we get from year to year. The first uh, year of the Tournament of Champions, uh, in 1989, all it took was uh, two matches for Bob Moran to win. He finished second, or seated second, rather, and won two matches to win his tournament. As Mike Morgan puts up a spare in the uh, eighth, two years ago when Paul Berger won it. He beat Al Cloutier. Al Cloutier came up from the number six spot, won four matches in a row. And then Paul Berger beat him for the championship. And then uh, last year, Pat Pay came up from the number There's four spot. Yes, strike for Paul Berger. A year ago, Pat Pay came up from the number four spot, won four matches, and won the tournament. And that's what Mike Morgan is trying to do right now. Real light hit, left just a two pin. Wood came back to knock the two pin down for the first strike in the match. This time he moves the three pin off the spot, which is going to make this conversion for a spare a little more difficult. One twenty seven and two thirty nine for a two game total. Oh, Mike Morgan for his final two, working on a spare in the eighth. Leading by 11. A six fill. The one, three, six, and eight with no wood. Nope. Everything but the eight pin. Well, right now, it's all even, if you use the total scores. But uh, Mike Morgan has a box in hand. Everything he puts in this 10th box will be his lead. Is he trailed by three coming in? Well, it's going to be interesting. Leaves the seven and the nine. Well, this thing's going to be tight. Going to the third and final game in single digits. Nine to be exact. 139 for Mike Morgan, a two string total of 248. So Mike Morgan with a nine pin lead. We have one game remaining to decide the Tournament of Champions winner, and we'll do that right after these words.
Well, one game to go in this season on the singles side in any event. I want to uh, let you forget that coming up right after this program at 1 o'clock, we'll have the doubles tournament of champions final. In that second game, Mike Morgan turned a three-pin deficit into a nine-pin lead. One seven eight, uh, one seven nine ten. This is uh, by far the smallest lead that Mike has had going into a third game, but he has led going into the third game of every match during this stretch. And he comes up with a fine spare here in the first. The one seven nine and ten. He now has 10 spares and no strikes. Oh, carried that extra pin. Looked like he was going to be left with a three, uh, two, four, 10. Two went out, then the four. Just the 10 pin left. 11 spares. Paul Berger's just gonna try to have to do the same thing. But no, he's not gonna get the extra pin. Six, seven, ten. Wants that piece of wood to roll over closer to the six, ten. It's not gonna happen. Couple choices. We try the wood, see if we can get it to move. Split the six, ten inside of the six, off the wall. Mm. He tried to split it. Pushes the lead up to 19. Now let's see what happens here. Leaving the two and the eight, that piece of wood in front should be well in play. And uh, Paul made this shot already, didn't he? Yes, he did. That wood is get front the very close. Oh, oh he got boy. by it. Perfect. Excellent shot. It, it was deceiving from the camera angle. That wood was actually much more in front of the two pin than it appeared. Mike Morgan is yet to throw a strike. A lot of spares, though. Only a five fill this time. He opened the second game with five spares in a row. Looking for his third in a row here. Oh, yes. Watch this again. Three weeks ago in his first match, Mike Morgan set a Tournament of Champions record with 21 marks. The tournament record for spares in a match is 13, shared by several different bowlers. And Mike's next spare will be his 13th. Oh, he needs some help. Ooh, he's sliding by in the right. Thought the wood might kick forward, but. Still there for nine. 62 through four. Paul Berger working on a spare. He's full. He'll take six. But a makeable spare with the wood. Four, seven, six, ten. We play the wood in front of the six door, right down the middle. Yes! Good shot. The ball's halfway down there. I'm thinking, well, that's, that looks like a pretty good place to play it, too. <laughs> right down the middle. Oh, off target. Let's see. Six. Four horsemen right. One, three, six, ten. No. He has trouble in this lane when he has anything to the right. It's an eight box, we will break, and we have six frames remaining in the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions final. 
Mike Morgan right now with a 22 pin lead. Can he make it four wins in a row? We'll find out shortly. Now Mike Morgan has won three matches in a row. He leads in this one. He's going to try and complete a four match sweep, but he's got a pretty tough customer on the other side of the scoreboard. 22 pins. Not many with six frames left. That was a lob. Oh my. A lob. It's a nine drop, but it's not going to count. And I don't think the uh, fans realized it, but Mike went right to the button. Well, Mike pointed to him. Mike, I think Mike knew it as soon as he let the ball go. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Almost the same ball. Pin just flew through between the seven and four pins, too. Almost for a strike, which would have been a spare. But he works it out for a ten. You can only see a very small portion of the crowd here at Park Place Lanes. But there is just a mob here. It certainly is. Well, you, you hear the noise in the background. You know that the few people you see on the screen can't make that much noise. <laughs> 610 left. And Mike does not want to leave two open frames for Paul to work on, I'm sure. Oh, yes. Clutch spare right there. I don't know where he's getting his energy from. <laughs> he has to be running on empty, but Paul Berger working on a 10 and a spare. And we just had a small technical problem, but I believe we can press onward. One, two, six, and ten left. Ball plays the wood, oh. sweeps everything to the right. Remains alive. That was the important one because Mike Morgan was open in that frame. I wasn't sure that wood was going to carry the head pin, but it did. Well, he needs some help here. Six fill through the middle. He's had this tandem before. Four, seven on the left, six, ten on the right. And let's see, if that wood stops right about there, he's going to have a shot. He may just have a shot. If the ball can carry through for the four pin. No. Mm. Well, here's the situation. Mike Morgan will come up working on a spare. And he will be adding to his lead, which right now is at 17, as you see, plus the fill on this spare. Mike has 13 spares, no strikes. He just doesn't want to make any mistakes, especially on marks. Leading by 17, can push it up to that three mark advantage. Well, that looks good. The four eight. But this is not going to be an easy spare. He's either going to have to get the four pin clean or take all the wood. He's thinking of taking the four pin by itself. Oh, we clipped the wood. Just enough to change the direction of the ball and it wasn't enough to carry the eight pin. Yeah. 10 box. Yeah. Lead now is 16 through completed frames. 25, 16 in this game. 25 through completed frames. Mike comes right back with another pretty good looking first ball. This time he'll shoot at the 2 5. That's a big spare right there. It certainly is. Not only is it a mark, but it also takes one more box away from Paul Berger to work on as far as open frames go. 
Paul is going to have to put four up in a row here. And that's not the ball he wanted. That last spare for Mike Morgan broke the Tournament of Champions record for most spares in a match. And Paul gave that one a heck of a run. Eighty-three. So now it's 26, but Mike Morgan already has a mark up in the eighth, as you see. Paul will have to put one up here and hope that Mike does not fill his spare with a decent fill. Uh, off the target, a head pin again, and Paul kind of just throws his arms up saying, you know, can't seem to hit that head pin with the first ball or the second right now. Mike Morgan in command right now. A seven. Yeah. Pushes it to 29, plus the fill. Well, certainly Mike's thinking more about the win than about the total score, but he's got a shot here at his fourth straight 400. He'd have to uh, put up some numbers here in the last two to do it. Seven fill. He would need two marks here to uh, get 400. Oof. <laughs> I thought he had that. Very close. Just running on pure adrenaline right now. 127 through nine. You need a double strike for 400, but he'd take any kind of a mark. Paul Berger's gonna have to throw strikes when he gets up. Still going. Oh, he's going to get another one, I think. Uh, no, he won't. <laughs> Twirled it around. <laughs> Wait a minute, it still might go. Well, he's going to play the single pin. You watch, he's going to play the single pin with the wood behind. It's going to jump over towards the 247. He's too far right. But that was the shot. Well, even without that, it's going to take a miraculous finish for Paul Berger to win this thing. A 136 for Mike Morgan and a three string total 384, which means uh, Paul Berger needs 145 just to tie. That means he needs a whole bunch of strikes. And that will do it. Gets the spare. But even if he were to strike out here, he would end up about five pins short. A two fill. Mike Morgan has done it. Four consecutive wins. He has come from that number four spot to win the Tri-State Megabucks Tournament of Champions, $1,500. And uh, we'll be talking to both bowlers and getting to our bonus ball contest, telling you a little bit more about our doubles tournament of champions final. And you'll hear the reaction now from Mike Morgan's fans here at Park Place Lanes. Terrific match. Mike Morgan gets it done four in a row. We'll be back in a minute. Back at Park Place Lanes, Doug Brown with Dan Murphy, and you know the best thing about this is that it's, you just can never predict what's going to happen when this uh, tournament begins. And uh, any one of these guys certainly could have won it. Uh, it turned out Mike Morgan uh, got things rolling and was able to win four shows. Actually, today was his lowest score of the four, but it was enough to win it. Yeah, they both struggled uh, most of the day. Uh, Mike, in the middle of the match, uh, was able to put some offense up there, and that's what carried him through the whole match. Paul had a tough day uh, the entire day. But uh, like you say, from one day to the next, you never. The ball could come back now and bowl another match and go 440. You never know. All right, it's time to give some money away. Let's uh, have Paul Berger come up first. Big round of applause for Paul. Second place 
prize money, six hundred dollars. This is the first time you uh, you've lost here in a while. It's been a while since you got the runner-up check, but uh, but still, we appreciate uh, your coming by. And uh, boy, you just ran into a buzzsaw. Mike's been rolling. Oh, Mike's been bowling real well. Uh, you know, I didn't give him much a match today. He gave me an opportunity in the first <laughs> string, and uh, and I gassed it. <laughs> and uh, after that, he was gone. Uh, he deserved it. He bowled great. Well, I'm sure uh, on behalf of uh, all of us and everybody here, we want to also congratulate you for your uh, recent 500 triple. That was a terrific accomplishment, and we hope to see you back again next year. I'll give it my best shot. All right. Thanks very much, Paul. Thanks. Appreciate it. And now Mike Morgan for the bonus ball contest. He uh, gave us a winner last week, John Downs, out in Rochester, New Hampshire. So we are... Uh, Back down to $20 in the jackpot, but of course there are still two sets of uh, brand new bowling balls uh, at stake should we get another match. And it'll be a light hit and a five. I don't think so. I, I think you're probably right, but you never know. You never know. We've had people guess two. We've, some people have written in and guessed two. Not this time, though. It was an eight. The guess was an eight for Gene Sansusi, I believe it is, from North Andover, Mass. Gene will be sending you a a gift as a consolation prize, and uh, I've got a little check here for you, Mike, for $1,500 for uh, four consecutive wins. Uh, I Obviously, no secret that we tape all uh, a lot of the programs on the same day, and uh, I'm sure you were feeling some of the effects there at the end. Yeah, I was a little tired. Like Paul said, he had the chance the first string and really had held me in there. Then I just took the four-box run and really ran with that. But it was the, I want to thank everyone out there because they pushed me. I really, you know... <laughs> I was running out of gas. They kept picking me up. You know, it really helped. Unusual too that uh, you didn't have any strikes in this match. All, making spares, but but yeah, I might just ran out of the power. You know, it was mm -hmm. just more or less forcing the ball there rather than having a good roll. And I was fortunate that Paul didn't have a good day. But you'll take it. Oh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, my brother will take some of this too. So we're all set. Mike, congratulations. I That's terrific. Tri-State Megabucks you, champion for 1992, Mike Morgan, having won four straight matches, and uh, it's. It's unusual that, that it has happened now. Of the four tournaments of champions we've had, three times now we've had a bowler win four matches. And the second that's the second of the three times that that bowler has won it all. You'd think, uh, because of the quality of the bowls, that that wouldn't happen, I think, because you've got right. the better bowlers. And, but it's happened. I don't know. Uh, they just get up for these matches, and you get on a roll, and maybe uh, he was just loose enough to carry it right through. Well, the season isn't quite over yet. Of course, we'll be back next Sunday at 12 noon with uh, some rebroadcast throughout the summer of uh, some of our best shows. But remember, the season is not over yet because coming up in a few minutes right after this break, we'll be back with the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions final. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, so long from Park Place Lanes.